Welcome to the Loopy Pro video manual. This is a series of videos all about Loopy Pro and getting you up and running as quickly as possible. In this video, we're gonna be talking about gear, things that you need to plug into your iPhone or your iPad to use Loopy Pro for recording, listening back, and sending out so your audience and you can hear it. And all the equipment I'm gonna be talking about today is actually in the description box underneath. Now, if you're using an iPhone or you're using an iPad that has a lightning connection on the bottom, you're gonna need one of these. This is a lightning to USB 3 adapter. Now there's two holes at the bottom there and one of them is USB 3 and the other one is the lightning again so you can plug in to keep it powered. So we plug this into the phone like so and then you're able to plug in a USB audio interface into the bottom of that. Obviously this works with any iOS device which is lightning based but if you've got a device that is USB-C then you're in luck because you've got more than one option. Some audio interfaces now in 2023 actually come as USB Type-C as standard so you won't actually need any kind of adapter. However with audio interfaces that are USB-C they may still draw too much power. Alternatively if you're using an audio interface that is USB-A and you want to use it with an iPad that's USB Type-C the official USB-C to multi-port adapter comes with HDMI, USB 3 and again a port to plug in for power. However things like the iPad Pros can actually power things that's more than 5 watts. So you can actually get away with something like this. This is the Benfi USB-C to USB-A adapter. It's really tiny and it's really cheap. In fact, it comes in a pack. The next piece of equipment is what's gonna become the central brain for where you plug in and where the audience can listen to you, and it's an audio interface. Now there's loads of audio interfaces out there on the market, and if you've already got one, great. But if you haven't, the first thing you need to think about is how many things am I gonna plug in? For example, right here, I've got the Mini Fuse 2 by Artoria. That will give me two ins, and it will also give me then two outs to a speaker, as well as a headphone jack, so I can hear it as well. The reason you'll want a headphones or a headphone jack is you you can do some clever things. For example, you can send the click track to your headphones, but the audience can't hear it. But if you're looking to plug in four, five, eight different things, you're gonna need a bigger audio interface. Now the nice caveat with that is most audio interfaces that are a little bit bigger normally come with their own power supply. So you would plug the audio interface into the power anyway, and then you just need to connect it. Now if it's a USB-C one, it goes straight into a USB-C iPad. However, if it is a USB-A one, no problem, you could just get away with something like that. As opposed to having a full multi-port adapter like this or something like this that I use which is the hyperdrive. The reason I use the hyperdrive is because I can put this cable extension on the end so it doesn't have to be flush with the iPad but you can take that off and plug it straight into the iPad and it's flush and it's got more than what the Apple multi-port offers including a headphone jack if you don't have an audio interface and you just want to hear what you've played back. Links to all the products I've been talking about are going to be in the description box below. Now once you've got the equipment plugged into the iPad or the iPhone the next part is actually quite easy it's just your own equipment. That would be microphones, leads for your guitar or keyboards or any instrument you're playing. And the final thing, and I've already said it, is a pair of headphones. A decent flat pair of headphones is a really good option because you'll hear the sound unboosted in any frequency. And just like audio interfaces, there's loads of headphones out there in the world for both listening, mixing, and mastering. And personally, I use the Status Audio CB1s. They're closed back studio headphones with real clarity and they're really competitively priced. Other popular headphones are Sennheiser Studio headphones or the new Rode NTH100s. You want something the way you can hear the same sound that you're outputting to the PA. So when you're looking at your EQs, you're not giving a boosted signal or it's not too bassy or too trebly in your ears and then the audience get a completely different mix which doesn't sound right. Now what I'm about to show you is a couple of diagrams and we start with the iPhone. So we would look to plug the iPhone into the adapter giving us a USB-A and then you plug your audio interface into that. But as I said before some audio interfaces require quite a lot of power and you may get this where it says this accessory is actually drawing too much power. And this is the reason for the power input here, so you can actually plug it in and keep it powered. Now the next piece of equipment is actually if you wanna keep it powered, but also keep it portable and that's a power bank. Loads of people have power banks to charge their devices on the go. That's what they were designed for. But the other advantage for things like Loopy Pro and plugging in an audio interface is actually powering those devices. Now this one is a little bit of an older one, but this is a RAV power. It's a 23,000 milliamp power supply. So I can just plug the normal Apple charging cable USB into here and then the lightning goes into here. Of course, if you've picked up a new iPhone over the past couple of years, you'll notice in the box now, it's actually lightning to USB Type-C. And the great thing about that 
that is you can pick up a good power bank that's got USB type C with even more wattage delivery and use that cable. Let's recap for iPhone. We've got the iPhone running Loopy Pro. We're gonna plug our adapter in, which gives us the USB-A that we need. And then from there, we can plug in our audio interface. And depending on which audio interface you have, you could power the audio interface yourself with its own power supply or if it doesn't have one, then we can actually power it by plugging power into the USB 3 to lightning adapter. By the way, just a little caveat with this, it's regularly known as the camera adapter because the original design for this was to plug this into your phone and then plug this end into a camera so you can transfer your photographs across. So if you are looking for this, I've got links in the description box below, but if you are looking for it in an Apple store, look for the USB 3 lightning to camera adapter. Now I've said iPhone, but don't forget, this will work with iPads as well that have a lightning connection. You just have to check which iPad it's compatible with as some of the really old ones Ones it won't work with. The next diagram I want to show you is for USB Type C. So we're going to go over to iPads that have got USB Type C, which quite a lot of them and all the new ones now pretty much are USB Type C. So two options. One is the powered option, and this is the simplest one of all, where it's a USB C cable going into the iPad, and the other end of that goes into your audio interface. The more advanced iPads, like the latest iPad Air and the iPad Pros, have enough power in them to actually power the audio interface. But bear in mind, it is taking more power from the iPad. So it's gonna drain your iPad down a little bit quicker. Alternatively, if that audio interface that you're plugging into has its own power supply, you can just plug that into the mains. This is a simpler solution. It's iPad, USB-C cable, and then into the USB-C audio interface. Now just to go back to this one, for example, this actually is USB-C when you plug it in, but the cable they supply is USB-C to USB-A. And that's okay, because what we can actually do is use the power cable that comes with your iPad and just plug that straight in and it works. If we're going from USB-C to USB-A for any reason, then we'll need to do two things. One is have some kind of adapter, and if the audio interface has its own power supply, then you'll get away with something like this. Whereas if it doesn't, then you're gonna need either the official Apple multi-port adapter or a third-party equivalent. Now, once you've plugged everything in, audio interface-wise, we're plugging in our microphones, our guitars, our keyboards, whatever you're plugging in, into your inputs. We've got the gains for your inputs, and then you'll have your headphones, and some audio interfaces have a separate headphone mix to the master out. And then we have our master out, where we go over to speakers or a PA, depending on what you're doing, whether you're doing this at home or on stage. Now, if you're using a bigger audio interface, the great thing is, with the audio core inside the software for iOS, Loopy Pro understands what it is. Now, again, there's loads of different companies who make audio interfaces with multiple ins and multiple outs. And again, I trust a company called Artoria, and this is the Artoria Audio Fuse Studio. Now, it's not a cheap piece of kit, and this actually runs my studio, but we have multiple ins at the front, and there is an absolute plethora of I.O. on the back, including multiple USBs, and it has its own power supply. This is really, really handy because the next part of hardware that we're talking about and gear is USB. If you're plugging things in like a USB keyboard, I have the great advantage of plugging it into here, and then this is USB-C out, it's just a USB-C to USB-C cable, and it understands and sends the information for both through to the iPad. Also, that audio interface has multiple ins and multiple outs. So if I want to, I could route the click track to somewhere else, I could route each individual loop to somewhere else if I really, really wanted to, or I could just give out a stereo signal. Now, if you don't have that luxury of having audio interfaces that have USBs on board, then the other thing you're gonna need if you wanna plug anything in by MIDI, like a USB musical keyboard, for example, is you're gonna need some kind of hub. Now you can get powered hubs and non-powered hubs, but from places like Hyperdrive, Anchor and all these other different companies, they make powered and non-powered USB hubs. But this is where I'd say just be careful. Not every USB hub is born equal. Some USB hubs are just there to power devices and don't actually transmit data. So if you're thinking of buying a powered USB hub, make sure it will transfer the data as well as power the devices. So we've talked about audio, how we can plug that audio in and out so we can get it out to speakers or headphones. The next part of this, which we've kind of touched on already, is MIDI. So we've talked about MIDI keyboards and plugging in by USB, but you've also got things like MIDI controllers. Something like this, which is the MPK Mini Play, has its own sounds, but it does have USB. And I can use it as a MIDI controller to control the sounds of both keyboards, drums, and even controls here inside Loopy Pro for Loopy Pro itself, or one of the apps, maybe like a keyboard or a synthesizer one, or maybe an effect in the form of AUV3 plugins and MIDI. If you're looking for controlling the loops without touching the iPad at all, then you've got something like this. 
This is the Akai MPC40 Mark II. And what's really, really clever is Michael has actually designed Loopy Pro to work by default with a couple of MIDI controllers, including this one. You can still program this up how you want, but by just plugging the USB into an audio interface or into a hub, which plugs into your iPad, it will understand what this is. Now to get all those things working, we're gonna be talking about MIDI in its own video because it's quite expansive and it depends on what controllers you're using as well as what keyboards you're using, what buttons, what knobs, what settings, there's loads inside MIDI. But say for this video, even though we're talking about the gear, we're talking about how you would use that gear and how you can plug it in. So let's go back to our diagram. We've got the iPhone or lightning connection diagram. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a USB hub and from that hub, whether it's powered or not, and you'll have to obviously be aware of what power you're pulling, then we're gonna add things like keyboards, MIDI controllers, and whatever you need. With the USB type C diagram, this is pretty much the same. So we need to make sure we've got enough connections. So if you don't, then you need a USB hub, whether that's powered or not. I would certainly recommend powered, therefore you don't want to draw too much power from the iPad and drain it so it only lasts like half an hour or an hour, where it would have actually lasted hours longer. And when you start plugging things in and it does drain too much power, you just get the same message anyway, saying that it's drawing too much power and it won't work. Now the final part of connections is actually Bluetooth. iPhones and iPads have Bluetooth built in and there are now on the market Bluetooth pedals or Bluetooth adapters where you can connect something that wouldn't traditionally be connected by USB but actually you can connect it by Bluetooth. So as I record this one of the newest pedals that's come out of the market which has got Bluetooth on is the Boss FS1 Wireless or FS1 WL. It does have connectivity to plug traditional pedals in but it will actually connect by Bluetooth to an iPad or an iPhone. It even has an app so you can program these buttons up then all you've got to do is exactly the same as a MIDI keyboard or a MIDI controller and just program it up, which we'll discuss in the MIDI video. With other things like air turns and Bluetooth pedals, the number one thing you need to make sure is how it outputs its data via Bluetooth. Some of them do it by CC number, some of them do it by program change, which is PC, but it's good to know which numbers it's doing because then that way you can program it up quite easily. Everything I've just talked about, I'm gonna put links in the description box if you wanna go and pick something like that up. But how do you get your equipment up and running? Well, it's really simple. Do you remember the diagrams from before? Get a piece of paper and a pen and take a step back and look at what you need. Now, if you just need an audio interface and you're plugging a microphone and a guitar in and that's it, that's actually quite a simple setup. But if you need pedals and you need MIDI controllers as well, then it's time to decide how you're going to plug all that into your iPhone or your iPad. Now, once we start plugging things in like a microphone, a guitar, keyboards, and we're using multiple inputs and multiple outputs, we need to have a look at the mixer and the colors and how the colors work. And that is our next video.